Hey gamers, welcome to my game room. AJ from Rolling With Rock here. It's Rocktober 2nd, and it's time to kick off my top 67 board games of all time with number 67 through 61. Before we get into the list, I just want to remind you that for every video released during the month of Rocktober you leave a comment on, you get entered into Board Game Trick or Treat at the end of the month on Halloween Day. This list will be my top 67 games of all time. I chose 67 because that is my favorite number and I wanted to do something a little different from the normal top 100. Please remember that these are my opinions and I have not played every board game out there. There's many games that I haven't played. If you think that I've missed some games, please go ahead and let me know in the comments. But just remember, I haven't played every game and there's a lot of games out there that I haven't played but I'm always looking for new games to play so if you have any recommendations that you don't see on this list as we go please go ahead and put them in the comments it gets you an entry into board game trick-or-treat and without any further ado let's go right into the list with number 67 number 67 on this list is one of the biggest games in my collection as well as one of the oldest especially on this list and that is carcassonne represented by carcassonne big box this is just one version of the big box which includes five different expansions this version can play two to six players and it plays in about 45 minutes carcassonne is a family weight game that you are placing tiles on the board one at a time in player order, trying to match sides, roads to roads, fields to fields, and cities to cities, so that you can create the biggest areas of any of those categories, and then place different shaped meeples that do different things for extra actions and points and controlling different areas. All of these actions earn you points as you go, and the player with the most points wins. We really like this game in our game group. I actually have not gotten it to the table in a long time. I would like to do so eventually again soon, because every time we pull Carcassonne out, it is very enjoyable. And when you have this much content for a game, and especially when you haven't played it in a long time, it doesn't feel old or repetitive in any way. Uh, so if there's anybody out there that hasn't played Carcassonne yet and you like tile laying games as well as family weight games, I would very much recommend Carcassonne from Rio Grande Games. Number 66. Going from one of the biggest tile laying games to one of the smallest, at number 66 we have Gold Ahoy from Mayfair Games. Gold Ahoy is a two-player only tire laying game that plays in about 15 minutes. It's also family weight. And what you do is you pull tiles out of a, out of a bag, this bag, and they have water and land on them. And what you would do is one by one, you will be building a six by six grid with your opponent. And you have to start in the middle of the grid and you can only build adjacent to a previous tile that's already been built. So in the, at the beginning, you're gonna be building at what is essentially the middle and then you can only build ever either adjacent or one row out farther than what's currently built. So you can't build like two or three out towards yourself you have to build fairly evenly and what your goal is is there are treasure chests on these tiles and you want to make land or sea in this case there's a sea treasure chest that comes back around to you and whoever has control of the most treasure chests at the end of the game wins I really like this game. Uh, I don't think I've ever really heard anybody talk about it. We bought it at Gen Con from Mayfair before they closed their doors, and we hadn't actually played it for a while. Decided to pull it off the shelf one time, me and my wife, when we had some time. We opened it up, we read the rules. Super, super easy. You can pick this game up and start playing in five minutes. And like I said, it's about 15 minutes to play. 
we played it two or three times just because it's very quick, very easy, and it was still a lot of fun. It has the same little puzzle puzzly mechanics as the previous game on this list, Carcassonne, but in a much smaller box. So if you're interested in games like Carcassonne, I would suggest taking a look at Gold Ahoy. And that is number 66. Number 65. Number 65 is another game that has a slight tile lane mechanic, but it's mostly an economic family weight game. And that is Happy Pigs by Yellow Games. In Happy Pigs, you are a farmer on your own farm trying to raise pigs. It is for two to six players and plays in about 40 minutes. What you do is you purchase pigs for your farm. You feed them to make them grow. You have them mate so you can create more pigs. And then you sell them back to market for a higher profit. In this game, you can also have other animals like chickens, sheep, cows, and penguins. And you oddly enough do that, do that exact same thing for all those different animals. However, the player with the most money at the end of the game wins. You play over the course of four seasons and at the end of each season any animal that you want to bring into the next season has to be vaccinated. So you have to buy little tokens and vaccinate your animals and then you flip them over and they have a little band-aid on them. It's actually very cute. I can go ahead and show you here. I'll pull out a pig and so this is one of the nice big fat pigs and then when you vaccinate them they get a little band-aid on them to show that they have been vaccinated and that means that they can be carried over to the next season like i said you do play four seasons in this game this is the little market tile where it shows the price of the tools and the price of the different size animals you can have four different size animals and as i said you can have different animals instead of just pigs but that is happy pigs from Yellow Games in at number 65. Number 64. From trying to make pigs happy so you can sell them for the most money to making the most money or doing whatever will make you the most happy in number 64, The Pursuit of Happiness by Stronghold and Art Grippa Games. In the pursuit of happiness, you take on the life of your own character, from birth all the way through old age and eventually death. You can do jobs, get items, and even start relationships. You can have anything that you want in your game. This is a worker placement life simulation game that really takes the game of life to a whole nother level, which is why everybody calls this board gamers game of life. I like this game a lot, except for one thing. The game is marked as 60 to 90 minutes, but at least when I play it, and this could just be myself, it always seems like it takes at least two hours. It is a slightly longer game than I wish it might be, but overall, I really like to play The Pursuit of Happiness. It has a really great mechanism as someone who grew up playing life, as I think most of us did. This gives you that concept, but in a much more fun game. And I really like all the different aspects of the game where you get jobs, you can do tasks, you can take on projects, you can even start relationships and a family. And you're doing all of these things to get short-term and long-term happiness, which is your overall point total, but you're also trying not to take on too much stress because as you take on stress, you get closer and closer to death. So it is a fun little balancing act, really simulates life very well in a board game, and that is number 64, The Pursuit of Happiness. Number 63. Number 63 is a board game based on a hit video game by Endemic Creations. This is Plague Inc. In Plague Inc, each player takes on a deadly plague in an area control game trying to dominate the world and kill 
the most humans. This is a game where each player will start in one country with a patient zero and slowly increase their traits and their killing power to infect more and more and more and ultimately roll a die to see how many people they can kill. When you can kill an entire country off, you take that country into your hand and the more countries you own from a certain continent will get you bonus points at the end of the game. You can have, it has a nice little board that has a map of the world on it and you put certain amount of countries onto that map. So for like North America here, it has three spaces. For Asia, it has five. So that's how many countries you can have from those continents on the board at one time. You collect trait cards and you have event cards that you can do to kind of change up the game a little bit. And each player will have their own player board. So what you're doing is you're putting your cubes onto the countries trying to dominate those countries. And once they get completely full with patience, the player that has the majority of cubes on that country rolls what they call the death die. If you roll a high enough number on the death die equal to your lethality, you can kill off that country and take it into your hand for final scoring at the end of the game. The player with the most points, i.e. the deadliest plague, wins Plague Inc. And that is number 63. Number 62. In at number 62, we have our first roll and write of the list, as well as the first game from the Imperial Settlers line, but certainly not the last. This is Imperial Settlers roll and write from Portal Games. I actually got to play this game for the first time last year at Gen Con 2019 at the launch event for this. I picked it up right there at Gen Con and got to play it a handful of times since then. It is a fun city building civilization roll and write game based in the universe of Imperial Settlers. It does have engine building similar to Imperial Settlers and then you use a lot of the same resources that you would in Imperial Settlers, but that's really where the comparisons end. It's definitely using that name um, you know, to build up what the game is, and I can see, you can see the inspirations, but it's very much its own style of game. Uh, you have these four dice that I really like, these custom dice here, that have resources on them. So you have your, your wood, your stone and your coins and then you have a slightly bigger die than the three resource die that has a meeple on it and then a number on each side and that is your action die that's how many actions you can take each round so you're going to roll all four dice and that's going to tell you what resources you get that round and how many actions you can take each player is going to have their own player sheet that looks like that. Will you be crossing off resources here at the top and then turning, uh, coming down here using bridges to get resources from there as well. You have different sheets here that you can use for different modes of the game. And then you also have little bonus actions that you get on each turn. This is a fairly quick roll and write. I believe it plays in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It plays in about 30 minutes. And it definitely gives you that feel of Imperial Settlers and with a look and the aesthetic and everything in a much shorter time frame. And so that is number 62, Imperial Settlers roll and write from Portal Games. Number 61. Rounding out this video in at number 61, it is Evolution by North Star Games. This game has one of 
my favorite art styles in any of the games. I really love the way that the trait cards work. And what you do, I also love the first player token in this game, this giant dinosaur. Absolutely love that. But what you do are you're going to have these player boards and you can turn them either side so that you can have them stacked this way or that way. And you will put cubes in them to represent the body size and the population of different species. You will start out with one of these, but you can get more species as you go. And each species can have up to three trait cards that have different art styles on them and different abilities. And your species can be herbivores or carnivores. And when you are playing, you have to make sure that your species eats. That is the basic mechanic and point getter of this game is getting food tokens that are represented here in this bag. What you have to do to get those food tokens is you will place, you play a card at the beginning of the round to put food in the watering hole. And then as you play your actions for the turn, you have to either take food from the watering hole to feed your uh, non-carnivore animals or have your carnivore animal species eat another species so that they can survive. Any species that does not have enough food equal to their population will lose population down to the amount of food they ate. So it's a very strategic game. Um, it doesn't have a lot of rules to it, but the trait cards are all make it very uh, variant because you can have so many different combinations of traits and then you have to look at how the trait cards interact with each other because some of them interact with each other that's on the right and the left. It, it takes about 60 minutes to play and it does play two to six players, so it has a wide player count there in a reasonable amount of time. And like I said, I love the art style in this game. There are expansions to this game with Climate and Flight. I have Climate, I do not have Flight, so I would like to get that at one point. But in at number 61 from North Star Games, that is Evolution. So that was number 67 through 61 on my top 67 games of all time. Just to recap, you have Carcassonne at number 67, Gold Ahoy at 66, 65 was Happy Pigs, 64 was The Pursuit of Happiness, 63 was Plague Inc., 62 Imperial Settlers Roll and Write, and 61 Evolution. For more information on any of these games that I covered today, you can check the description down below for links to their BGG pages. They'll be listed under the number that they were on this list. And remember, on Monday, we'll be back with numbers 60 through 56 on my top 67 games of all time. Tomorrow on Saturday will be Rock and Remy Reviews and Plays First Orchard from Haba Games, and on Sunday night, I will be streaming live on twitch.tv slash rollingwithrock. Please remember to enter Board Game Trick or Treat by subscribing to this YouTube channel and leaving a comment on every video that comes by through Rocktober it earns you one entry into Board Game Trick or Treat. Go ahead and please like this video if it seemed like content that you enjoyed and share this video on this channel with your friends so we can help Rocktober be the best it can be and Rolling With Rock grow. That'll do it for me today. I hope you guys all have a wonderful Friday. Thank you so much for watching this video of Rocktober from Rolling With Rock.